Okay, this rig, which is basically one of those uh, turkey boiling, uh, oil burning turkey stand uh, stove setups, the burner. What the uh, what the pot is is a uh, is a canning pot, and there's oh I don't know there's probably about five gallons of water in here, and to that it's up to a nice rolling boil at this point. Now you gotta control it, otherwise it will put your flame out like it just did here. back on you got to watch as soon as you put your sal soda in you put it in there just about an ounce at a time one of these little coffee scoops size measures and you see how it starts to boil up and the problem with it though it, it will boil over very very quickly so I always keep my lighter at hand <laughs> as one of those long barbecue lighters And this will boil, well, this is the set of antlers here that was mounted dry over a year ago. And um, this one here I bought up at the uh, NTA in uh, Minnesota years and years, decades ago. And it never had any of the... Um, uh, the surface tissue removed so it's dried tight to the bone and I do want to mount this but I will not mount it with that crud on there uh, I say my little my little bucks skull with the addition of a dry preservative called Calorax at the time in 1973 the bone actually de deteriorated it degraded to the point where the bone turned black and weakened extremely to the point where when I first remounted him the skull plate had split inside the mount so I mounted it two other times after stitching the skull plate together with a uh, picture hanger wire which is very very durable and then fiberglassing it together it wasn't holding up anymore after the third time on mounting it and taking it apart so for this, this last time of remounting him, he's been mounted on a, a new uh, uh, styrene, uh, uh, polystyrene uh, resin casting of a skull plate. This is why I boil all my skulls. Now, for a full skull, I do the same thing. I just this is not really a hard boil. This is more of a, of a rolling boil, like what they call a roiling boil. And when you put the sal soda in, it will turn, what it does to fresh, the fresh red meat left on the skull after, after scraping it clean and whatnot, it actually turns it to a gelatinous state where you can see through it and literally just, you could scrape it off with your fingernails. Problem is, it's very hot, so I use a knife 
uh, then you can wash it. The sal soda, besides turning the meat to a gelatin looking material, also draws out the grease and the blood from within the bone itself. You see, bone, uh, blood is produced in the bone and the skull is bone. There's blood marrow within that bone and if you don't take it out via cleaning I don't care even if, if, if you macerate, you know, soak it in, in water until it rots, you have to then degrease it. To me, this does the same thing, only a lot quicker and with less stink. Now sal soda has sort of an aroma of kind of like laundry detergent, which is not too bad. It smells, it's rather pleasant smelling. Now, I'm out here in my main building. This is a 30 by 40 building. This pot and the burner is located in my horse's old stall. There's a rubber mat down, so, and I put white wrapping paper, butcher paper on the floor to absorb anything that might spill over. But um, I used to try to boil antlers outside, but around here we have a very, very open area. We have six and a half acres, mostly wooded, but when the wind blows through, Baby, it blows. So, and this would always, my uh, stove top, my burner here would always get blown out. So I let this go for at least a half hour before I worry about checking it. I stick around in case it, just in case it boils over again. I'm always out here with it. And I just keep adding an ounce at a time of sal soda. You notice one side of the pot boils a little, a little harder than the other. You can control that by the amount of oxygen you allow into the line. This has a setting for that. So adjust the height. You can also adjust the height of the flame to control the boil. But this will keep going until whatever's left on this skull. And this skull had been boiled once before. There's just a little more junk I want to get off of it. And this one here, as you saw in the photo, it's brown, or kind of a tan color, because of the uh, the crap left on there and dried on there. Now you see it's boiling a little harder. On an older set of antlers like this with, an, with old dried crud on it, I will let it boil a little harder than I usually do. When it's fresh, it doesn't have to boil this hard. It's just a rolling boil like you saw in the beginning. I'm going to turn this down before it spills over. There we go. Turn that down a little bit. And it's just a nice rolling boil. It rolls, the water rolls around at the temperature of boiling. Now that's all the sal soda I'm going to put in, just that four or five scoops, whatever I put in. That's it. There's plenty left in there. Um, I can tell you, when you do a fresh pair of uh, skulls, and it, this, this can hold two to three, possibly four skulls. It depends on the size of, of, of the skull plate, okay? I've, I've had four antlers on here. Uh, they all connect, you know, you connect all the time, and, and sort of lay the tines over each other on the board, keeps it from falling all the way to the bottom. You don't want that. Uh, any color that's removed from the antlers itself can be restored with stains. You can use oil stains, you can use potassium permanganate, you can use one of the commercially prepared uh, antler colors. I don't do that, I've been doing this long enough. I can paint, I can re restore color with oils if I need to. So. I'm not really worried about that. On big antlers, large antlers like this, I'll boil two at a time. It's time saver and it makes more sense. And they sort of hold each other up. You know, they sort of intertwine, they, they hold each other up. And it's nice. Um, the old antlers, will, the old skull plate will stay in here for, I will check it after a half hour. It will stay for an hour to an hour and a half to possibly two hours. A fresh one, 
We'll be able to come out of here after about 15, 20 minutes. I can start scraping it, put it back in for an additional cleaning, and um, it gets clean that way. When this is done, and you remove the antlers, and the solution cools, you will notice the water is brown and it's red. Why is it brown and red? It's brown and red for the simple reason that you've drawn out all the blood, all the oils, and all the crud from the antlers, from the skull, not the antlers, the skull plate. And it will discolor the water. And it's nasty looking. But uh, I'd rather it be nasty looking in the pot when I spill it out over in, the, ch over in the, the bushes than have it remain in the skull and have it rot in the skull. Anyone who thinks you don't have to boil a skull is a fool. Period. I don't give a rat's ass who likes that statement or not. If you leave a raw antler skull uh, or a raw skull plate with your antlers in a mount, you're a damn fool. You need to boil them. Boil them clean. Boil them hard. Boil them thoroughly. This has to be thoroughly, thoroughly cleaned. And you're going to see a big difference when I pull this, this uh, set of antlers that's being done for the remount out. You saw it when it was pulled out of the head, that it had mold on the bottom. Now those mold spots were still here when I pulled it out last time. I'm going to see if this cleaning can remove them as well. If not, I'll get a wire brush and I'll scrub them clean. But that's what you get when you leave a raw skull in a mount. All right, there's no such thing as dry preservative. Dry preservative simply dries something out before it can, it can start to rot right away. It will eventually decompose over the years. It'll, it'll buckle. It will drum. It will shift. It's a lazy-ass way to prepare a mount to ignore boiling the antlers. That's just plain lazy. This is a little more work, so be it. If you don't like this, you know, go do something else. There's always tech schools looking for new students. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And here you can, <clears throat> you can see the sutures of the skull under the water as it's cleaning, cleaning. You see how nice the skull now is starting to show up. I've reversed the position of the two racks. Now the remount is closest to the camera. Uh, for some reason it's, it's boiling hotter on the other side and that's, that's the side I want to have a hard boil on right now because that's the side that the old Minnesota rack is, is in. As you can see down into the water, as the water boils over, as the water rolls over the bone, you can see the sutures of the, of the skull. These antlers have been in here for about, uh, been boiling for about 20 minutes now. Let's see what we've got here. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's looking nice. And you can see that little bit of crud around the, uh, the antler burrs. That's need, that needs to be scraped off. That's just now turning to the gelatinous state I, I talked about. Sometimes you need to add a little, a little water to the pot as it's, as it's boiling. <clears throat> the evaporation takes place, so you add a little more water as needed. I'm going to let this go about another 15 minutes or so. Take the racks out of the, out of the pot, scrape them. And the uh, the Minnesota rack may go in, but I think I think this uh, this one here, this remount antlers, I think that'll be done. It'll be well cooked and very well degreased. I'm real happy the way this is turning out. This looks really, really well.
Okay, fresh out of the pot, still steamy. I'll grab a knife and you see how this is sort of gelatinous here? Take that off. I just put it on a towel so it doesn't slip slide around in its own juice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Nice the way this comes off. I don't know how well you can see. There we go. You can really, the light really does show through this. Pretty gelatinous, like I said. And I'm just going to keep scraping this crud off of here. And leaving this shit on a mount. I'm glad he brought it to me after only having it in his house just a few months. Okay? Because had he brought it back later, there's a good possibility this would have been rotted or he would have had insect infestation. Neither one is pleasant to deal with. Let's get all this crap off of here. I'll take it outside and with a squirt bottle I will squirt water over this to further kind of wash this shit away. And the antlers, the antlers are hot. They're pretty, they're pretty damn hot. But I've been doing this for a long time. Don't matter. Like I said, what was on here before is already still just laying on the table. Now I'm going to go squirt it and come back and, and go over it. All right, nice nice thing about time. having an old towel laying around is when I bring it in from squirting it off with water, I can go ahead and kind of scrub it dry with a towel. And the coarseness of the roughness of this old towel will help remove any more gelatinous material from the skull plate. clean it up some. Now, when this dries, it'll dry fairly white. I don't know if it'll dry as bone white as a fresh skull, but it's going to dry a hell of a lot whiter than it was when I pulled it out of that mount. Now, I'm going to go get the old Minnesota rack out of the water. Now, here we go with that old Minnesota rack. I had a brown skull cap. And what the brown skull cap was is all this shit that's on here. You see how that's just coming right off? It's like, a, it's like a gelatin. It's like a gelatin now, now that it's been boiled. Comes off real easy. But you, you think you have them clean until somebody comes along and boils them on camera and shows, hey, now that skull plate you thought was all nice and clean? Well, guess what? It's got a ton of shit on it. You left all this shit on here. And it's not just the stuff on the surface, it's the grease and blood within the bone itself. Why? Because within the bone is where marrow is produced. Marrow is manufactured in the bones. And guess what kids? The skull is the head bone. So, 
And you see how nice and white that's coming? That's not even dry yet. Once I get the rest of this shit off of here, look at that. I'm going to put it back in to boil to further break down this, this crud. It'll get a final scraping off. You see, when you have when you have to slice through it like that, there's still quite a bit of uncooked crud left in place on the bone that needs to be taken away. You have to slice through it like this. It's holding on pretty good. And like I say, this this rack, I got this rack decades ago. I don't remember if it was given to me or if I bought it. I. I want to say it was given to me, but I probably bought it. I can get this shit off the skull here, off the skull plate, all of it. There we go. There we are. I'm going to go put it in the boil. We'll put it back in the pot and back in the boil. And let it boil about another half hour. This little pile of deliciousness might not look like a lot to a human, but to insects, that's a banquet. And the only reason bugs have not gotten into it here in my shop is because I did salt the skull. I soaked I did soak it in salt water. But salt water soaking is not a preservative, it's just simply salting the meat. But this is all that gelatinous looking meat that came off in the boil. Okay. And you can see how nice this old boy is drying. He's drying really white now. He's getting really white. And the more he dries out, the whiter this will get. Now I'm going to get down here with a wire brush, a stiff wire brush, a steel brush, and I'm going to further remove any of the gelatinous meat that's remaining on the bone. Mm -hmm.